Welcome to the Limitless Nation. This little episode is on making every single rep count. And one thing I want to do is I want to give people access to all of the information, all of the tools that they need to actually make the most of their training and get the most out of their training. And this little seminar, I guess, has come about because a lot of my clients, they absolutely love the way we train. And once they start to understand the power of making every rep count and the power of tempo and strength training, they actually start to realize like there's been a big, big missing component to everything they've done in the past. And the results that they get is absolutely phenomenal. So welcome to this episode of the Limitless Nation. This is called Make Every Rep Count, the, the power of tempo and strength and performance training. And at the end of this, we do have a little code word for those of you who would like a, a two week um, trial on what we do after this presentation. So feel free to sit back. I'll try to unpack as much knowledge as I can so that you guys can make the most of every single rep. So what is tempo training and why should you care? So tempo training is, is probably one of the most important things. If you want to improve your athletic performance, whether it's something, you know, as, as a track and field athlete, an on-field athlete, um, a strength athlete, or just your everyday athlete that wants to look, perform, and feel good, okay? And so tempo is is something that, you know, makes a rep not a rep. And it's, it's something that once you understand and master, your training will change forever. Like all of the results that you always wanted, you'll be able to get. And also, like, you'll wonder why you haven't been able to progress like this in the past because it is something that will um, absolutely change your training. So it's also going to minimize injuries. Um, you, One of my biggest like things in, in the past with my own training is that I was always injured back in the day, you know, when I was doing CrossFit training and stuff like that, where there was no real intent or focus on tempo training. You know, I'd, for some reason, I'd always either hit a plateau, get injured, or, you know, have to take time off training. And so once you master the stuff, you'll be able to continuously progress. You you have a far likely um, chance, a far less likely chance of getting injured, and all your plateaus will, will pretty much be beaten. So, first of all, you need to understand tempo prescription. Okay, and so. One of the big reasons we did this, we get a lot of clients or a lot of people asking, what do these numbers mean? So essentially when you're prescribing tempo, you have four phases of a lift that you prescribe tempo for and, and adjusting the tempo on each of those phases of the lift is going to impact the way that that rep makes you adapt or the stimulus that it puts on the body. So each of the four phases of the lift are extremely important. They all have different impacts on the body. Body. So when we have a tempo prescription, we have something like this. We have a 4-2-X-O, okay? So the first number is essentially the lengthening phase of the lift. And so what this generally looks like, and the reason why I've got a lap pull down here is generally it'll look like when you're going down or the eccentric portion or the lengthening portion of a lift. So when a muscle is being lengthened or essentially stretched, that would be considered the eccentric phase of the lift most of the time when you got something like a squat a bench press a deadlift most exercises is when it's going to be the lowering phase of the lift something like a lap pull down it's actually the raising phase of the lift so just think that anytime the muscle is is lengthening that is the eccentric phase or the first number okay and so then the second number is actually the bottom position so here we've got a lady, she's holding the bottom of the squat. And quite often in the bottom position, this is where you'll use a pause, okay? So the second number is always the bottom portion of the lift. Now, the third number is, is the concentric or the shortening phase of the lift. And so on, the, on this lady here with the pull-up, and this is why she's actually pulling up, which is shortening her lap muscle, which is actually the concentric phase, looks like it's the same as, as your lap pull-down. But think about the lap pull-down. You've got the eccentric. We're on the pull-up. You're pulling up, okay? Um, so generally with the third number, that will be your concentric phase or the shortening phase. Most of the time it's going up in this case. Then the fourth number is you've got the top of the lift, okay? And so 
not often you'll prescribe um, a, a number here or a, a different tempo here, but for something like a hip thrust, um, the top of a back extension, you know, even the top of a shoulder press, um, this can be a very, very good. Same with the top of a pull-up as well. So think of the, the first and third number as your eccentric and concentric, so generally the, the um the up and the down phase of the lift, and then your second and fourth numbers are at the bottom and the top. Generally, they have some sort of pause in there. So that is tempo prescription. Then we have to understand the different muscle contractions and how they actually affect um, the different types of goals that we might have. So we're going to cover performance, hypertrophy, um, and conditioning and i'm just going to go over how each of the contraction types the muscle contraction types will impact these so the eccentric contraction type when you're essentially under that lengthening phase if you're looking to improve performance what it will do is it's actually great for improving um motor learning so generally on the eccentric or, or the lengthening phase what you have to do is you have to improve your motor learning as you're coming down. So spending that time with a slow lowering, it'll actually highlight any weak links you have or any lack of motor control under that eccentric phase of the lift. So when you slow down that tempo, when you slow down that eccentric phase, it's actually going to give you the, um, the ability and the time to practice better positions, to get into better positions, understand what you're doing with your technique, and over time it is going to speed up the, the rate of motor learning or the, the rate of technique improvements, as long as you're, you're training in the right technique to start with. It's also going to give you faster strength gains and greater potential. So if you have a higher eccentric to concentric um, ratio, which means you've got Let's say, for example, you could lift 100 kilos on the way going down, but you can only lift 80 kilos on the way going up. Let's say you can control, um, let's say you can lift 120 really, really fast on the way up. Then you go and try to lift 120 with a slow eccentric, but you can't hold it. You collapse, you crumble. That means that you're a greater risk of injury and your, your potential strength gains, if you were to apply some slow tempo work, could be massive. Okay, So generally when people start to use a slow eccentric um, in terms of performance, you're going to get some really fast strength gains. You're going to improve your potential for improving force. Um, and it's, it's often something that we see, you know, makes a huge difference really, really quickly, especially in people who haven't done eccentric training um, in the past. So it's also going to improve your joint integrity and force absorption. So when you've got the muscle under length, you're actually putting tension on the joints and the tendons as well. So what you're going to do is you're going to help to remodel those the, um, the soft tissues in there so that you can actually get them stronger, thicker, um, improve their resilience to, to force um, and um, improve their ability to absorb force as well, which is great in the long run, especially if you're wanting to improve performance as well because a stronger more stable more resilient joint um, is also going to allow for more strength or force production uh, force expression over time so eccentric phase eccentric training one of the most important things you can do if you want to improve performance it doesn't always mean it's slow either so sometimes you will do it for a more advanced athlete you will do a fast eccentric um, but most of the time you're going to work on a slower eccentric uh, to to bring up these uh, for a start generally for your intermediate um, or beginner intermediate and up to advanced you know your your slow eccentric training um, is going to be very very beneficial no matter what sport you play whether it's you know um, field sports track sports strength sports or just everyday you know strength performance for people who just love training um, then you have your isometric contraction. So this is basically we have no movement. Okay, so uh, an example of this might be like a wall set. You know, you're sitting there in a wall set. It's burning. It's hard, um, but it is. There are some great benefits for performance. So one is that it's great for feedback. So something like a, um, a an isometric squat where you come down. Something like a, a yielding isometric where you take a squat, for example, 
come down to your weak point and you have to hold there from anywhere from two to 10 to 20 seconds, okay? So yielding isometrics are great for a couple of things. It's great for the athlete to get feedback. Okay, cool, am I in the right position? Am I doing the cue that my coach has given me? It's also great for your coach to see the positions that I, what's this person doing in these positions? Where's the bar path? What can we do with the joints? Are, are they aligned in the most optimal position for that person in their anatomy? So isometrics, yielding isometrics can be great for feedback in terms of one for the athlete and two for the coach to see that your techniques are improving. Um, it's also beautiful for pinpointing weaknesses, okay? So if you have a specific sticking point or if there's somewhere you really, really need to work on in terms of your performance and whatever it is you're trying to perform in, then isometrics can be absolutely beautiful for pinpointing those weaknesses. Um, it's also great too if you're in season because at one, it has a really, really high rate of force production. So the amount of force production with an isometric and something like an overcoming isometric where you're pushing into pins or um, you're pushing against something very, very heavy that you can't actually move, um, the, the amount of force you produce is very, very high, but the amount of muscle damage is actually quite low. And there's also less fatigue than just lifting a heavy, um, concentric focused lift. So for athletes that are in season that still want to ramp up and improve their nervous system, great method to use, um, because it also reduces the amount of fatigue and the amount of muscle damage, which you don't want to be too high. Plus, you can also train it quite often as well. So isometrics are absolutely beautiful when applied in different um, different styles for performance. Then, so the concentric, where does concentrics fit in? So one thing, and this is what I love to do with performance, is, is I love to bring up the eccentric and isometric capacities because if you have a higher eccentric and isometric capacity your concentric is always going to be much higher you know quite often especially if you're a relatively like an intermediate to advanced athlete you'll probably get away with quite a lot you know you might be able to bounce out of the bottom in a, in a squat and, and your concentric or the shortening phase of the lift might look really really good because it's happening really really fast but if you were to slow it down or if you were to hit a sticking point, it's always the eccentric or the isometrics that are going to make that concentric phase or the expression of your strength and power much, much greater. So, But there are reasons why you would focus purely on, on concentrics. One is you're going to get a higher rate of force development. Okay, So for any sport or any, any person generally in general that wants to move faster, move heavy weights faster, um, you do need to work on some concentric only methods stuff like plyometrics stuff like velocity based training um stuff like dynamic effort training can be very very good when you apply it in the right areas um for your training as well um things like you know the olympic lifts as well can be great for rate of force development beautiful tool for making people more powerful more explosive um, and also, you know, just better athletes as well. Um, and one good thing about concentric only training or concentric focus training um, for performance is that you can get away with less muscle damage. So in a concentric phase, you're always going to get less muscle damage than an eccentric phase because the muscle isn't lengthened. In the eccentric, you're actually recruiting less of the fibers. So you've got less of the fibers to actually help produce that force. Um, and because it's coming under length, you're actually getting micro tears concentric that's not as high okay so you get less muscle damage you can also get a lot more metabolic stress um you can also doing a lot of short and say with like a banded um like a, a high rep band exercise you can actually bring a lot of blood flow a lot of nutrients to a specific either target muscle or target joint and joints and tendons actually love really, really high volume. And so one of the beautiful things about concentric only training, like a, a high um, volume banded exercise is that one, there's not a lot of muscle damage. There's not a lot of recovery debt from it. And if you do it, you know, you can add it onto your workouts and still get a really, really good um, adaptation to joints, tendons, um, and a little bit of hypertrophy work as well from the metabolic stress as well. So the different muscle contractions in terms of performance, 
Um, having these in, in your programming is very, very important, um, but that's to help you understand that. So then we look at it from a, a hypertrophy fa uh, focus. So if your goal is to gain muscle um, or improve you know, the shape of your body or the way you look, different muscle contractions will have different impacts on the body once again. So eccentric is essentially, one, it is if you do have eccentric training in, in your bodybuilding style training or your hypertrophy style training, you are going to get strength from performance gains, okay? And so you are going to improve the amount of muscle you can recruit. You are going to get a lot of neural adaptations, which over time, when you go into your concentric only type stuff, you're going to be able to recruit more of the muscle that you have which means that you're going to be able to get a greater stimulus, you're going to get a greater response, and you're going to get greater hypertrophy down the track. So having eccentric focus training in your training um, at, at an early phase is going to be very, very beneficial. As you go further into, if you're doing a fat loss phase, you may want to remove the eccentric focus training because as you get deeper into a deficit, that muscle damage, you know, that's going to be harder to recover from. So eccentric training, if, especially if you're in a deficit, you'd probably remove as much as you possibly can towards, you know, the end of the peak of the physique competition or whatever you're working on there. And you'd probably bring in more of the concentric only, more of the pump type work. But really, really important. You're also going to get a lot of muscle damage, and muscle damage is one of the most important stimulus you need. Sorry, not the most important. It's one of the most powerful triggers for muscle protein synthesis. So when you have muscle damage, what you're going to do is signal to the body, you're going to signal mTOR, which is going to, once again, stimulate muscle protein synthesis. It's going to recruit satellite cells, and it's going to build back a stronger, thicker muscle. Also, too, when you're doing eccentric focus training, especially in terms of hypertrophy, if you're doing heavy enough weight, so weights above 80%, okay, you're more likely to get type 2 fiber recruitment, okay? So generally when you're doing reps, so say you're doing a high volume of reps, let's say anywhere between, you know, 3 generally to 30 reps, you will get some hypertrophy response if you're going close to failure, okay? And so... The reason why eccentric training, especially at a higher percentage, is that once you start to hit around 80% of your maximum rate of force development, you are going to recruit more of those fast twitch fibers. Okay, so the reason why like having a, a lower rep range can be great for a high twitch, uh, fast twitch fiber recruitment is that Above 80%, you're going to recruit more of those fibers. You need to because it's a higher rate of force development and you require more of those type 2 fibers to get the job done, okay? One of the beautiful things about eccentric training too in terms of hypertrophy is if you have a slower, longer eccentric, you're also going to get more hypertrophy of the soft tissues, the ligaments, the tendons as well. So that's Really, really important in terms of hypertrophy. Isometric contractions. So when you're using an isometric contraction, generally you're going to use it for something like a pre-fatigue. So you might hold a peak contraction at the top here or a stretch at the bottom. So using an isometric to pre-fatigue a muscle can be an absolutely beautiful method, especially with your isometrics. Reason being is you're trapping, trapping blood and oxygen in that muscle. What you're doing is you're getting more of the metabolites, more of the growth factors, more of that lactate buildup, which once again signals a strong response to the body that the muscle will need to grow. Also, too, one of the, the strongest signals that you can give your body is having a muscle that is under length, so basically at its full strength, with a lot of load and a lot of tension on that muscle. So something like the bottom of a squat, okay? As long as you're not just sitting at the bottom, you could be just that far below the bottom of your squat. Your glutes are under a great stretch at that point there. So having a lot of tension in an active isometric contraction at the bottom of that squat is going to be one of the strongest signals for hypertrophy that you can come across. So using isometrics to get stretch mediated hypertrophy is one of the most or one of the most effective ways to grow a lot of muscle. Um, you're also going to get this hypoxic effect. As I said before, you're going to get growth factors. You're going to get this metabolic response by trapping oxygen and blood in that muscle. You'll feel the burn. You'll feel the pump. 
Um, and that can be another strong signal for hypertrophy as well. Then we have concentric focused uh, hypertrophy training. Okay, so one thing that, and this is something I've recently done. So let's say we use a tempo like a, a 3030 tempo. So three seconds on the way down and then three, two, one on the way up. What that's great for is it allows you to improve your mind muscle connection. So if you're someone that has a lagging muscle group or even a lagging technique, um, a, a lagging motor pattern in the concentric action, this can be a great way to bring up a lagging muscle. So say for example, you're doing something like a hack squat. Okay, so you come down for three seconds, come up for three seconds. A lot of people, if they have weak quads, they wanna shift back. Using that three seconds is going to teach your quads to stay on that whole time. It's it's a really tough method, but it can be a great method to bring up a lagging muscle. Absolutely brilliant um, to bring up that, especially if you're looking to improve a motor pattern as well. It's something I really like using um, to improve technique on our strength athletes. Um, you're also going to get more bit metabolic stress and growth factors Um once again, if you are doing concentric only focused training, you're going to get less muscle damage, which means you can recover from it a lot faster. So if you have someone who has a low recovery rate or if you're someone who has a low recovery rate or someone that just does not respond well to a lot of muscle damage, you know, you're always sore, you just don't seem to recover and and you really don't like that feeling of, of being sore all the time, then concentric only focused training for hypertrophy can be absolutely brilliant. Um, you're gonna get a lot of metabolic stress, so you'll get that burn, you know, you'll get that pump, um, which once again, great signal for, for hypertrophy as well. Um, and also too, you know, when you do a lot of high volume, high reps, it can bring a lot of blood flow to joints, great for healing as well. Um, and it's it's a great way to you know add in a little bit of extra volume without without digging a recovery debt too low as well. Um, it may potentially give you a thicker muscle belly as well, so it makes the muscles look bigger by making the middle or the belly of the muscle potentially look slightly bigger. And then when we have a look at the use of tempo training in regards to conditioning, so the eccentric component of conditioning program is you're going to get a greater force potential, okay? So if you're doing something like CrossFit or, you know, any of the shorter, more um, mixed modality type training, having a higher force potential is absolutely critical, okay? So if you've got greater force absorption, if you're playing rugby or something like that, you're able to take more hits. You're able to give more hits, take more hits, um, and you're also able to handle heavier loads more often, okay? And so... This is something I've even seen in ultra endurance sports, you know, that do require, you know, some sort of heavy lifting or some sort of heavy carrying, um, you know, whether it be, you know, something like a high rocks or something like that. If you're stronger and you have to carry something heavy, it's going to feel lighter. This is going to make your efficiency, the the impact of that heavy load a lot less because you're working at a, at a lower percentage of your capacity. Often something that's overlooked in endurance events, especially mixed modality stuff like CrossFit, um, high rocks, your hybrid type training, stream and conditioning type stuff is actually being very strong. Okay. And so having that eccentric training in um, your programming is absolutely critical if you want to be an elite conditioned athlete. Okay. Um, development of the type two fiber. So once again, if you're playing a power sport, something like CrossFit that does have high output of power, you then need to develop type two fibers. Also, if you want to be fast, okay, so eccentric training will preferentially recruit fast twitch muscle fibers, which will make you faster, more explosive, able to get more work done in a shorter period of time. Cool. And it's also going to improve your joint integrity and force absorption. So Anytime that you have a high impact sport, like let's say you're doing multi-day endurance events, stuff like that, if you work on eccentric training in your off season, you're gonna have a stronger joints, stronger angles, stronger knees, shoulders, all of that sort of stuff. It's gonna take less wear and tear, you're gonna break down less, you're gonna be able to stay in your sport longer and you'll be able to um, do that event, you know, with less impact on the body um, and you'll be able to, stay at a higher rate for a lot longer um isometrics okay so postural strength and capacity so if you play any sport let's say something like hockey okay where you're bent over all the time and 
You know, often technique, technique and efficiency in any endurance sport is is absolutely critical. Critical because as your technique um, decreases, you have to work harder. As your efficiency decreases, you have to work harder. More and more fatigue over time. Okay, and so if you have better postural strength and capacity. The, the beautiful thing is you'll have less fatigue, you'll be able to have better technique, and you'll be able to play the game longer, faster, and harder for a lot longer, okay? Um, also, injury management, okay? So isometrics are great for any soft tissue injuries. They can be something that can decrease pain um, and recover from injuries very, very quickly. It's also a great way to build up local muscular endurance. So something like a... Um, a 30 second split squat with a, a 30 second holder parallel into 10 to 12 reps absolutely beautiful for local muscular endurance okay um keeping that muscle under tension trapping trapping all that blood and oxygen in there starting to get that burn getting your lactate threshold up is something that can be absolutely beautiful if you want to um if you need a lot of local muscular endurance okay and so isometric contractions or isometric methods are uh, brilliant in that um capacity for conditioning concentrics so improvements in fast twitch resilience fibers uh improvements in fast twitch resilience so using something like a robot plyometrics um which is something where you'll do um 20 to 30 seconds of jumps so you might just jump over some pogos and the goal is to keep going as long as you can for about five to ten minutes okay so you're doing a fast twitch muscle uh fast twitch fiber um dominant movement and you're doing that for a long period of time so concentric only jumps you yeah. know over a long period of time improves the resilience of the fast twitch fibers improves the fitness of the fast twitch fibers as well so if you're someone that is very very explosive but you find you fatigue very quickly say something like you know jujitsu every time you do a power movement you're like you just get fatigued you get gassed out Okay, so using something like aerobic plyometrics, absolutely brilliant in terms of bringing up your capacity to do repeat effort explosive movements. Okay, um, local muscular endurance. So this is this is a, a different tempo method. So tempo method where you're talking about improving your capacity for endurance is that you're doing three seconds down, three seconds up without actually going to full um full range of movements of of that muscle so you're not resting on the joints you're not resting on the bones what you're actually doing is you're keeping that muscle contracted the whole time anywhere from 45 seconds i i've got people doing up to four minutes um absolutely devastating like hard to do but absolutely brilliant in terms of local muscular endurance and so different methods here can be absolutely brilliant um if you know you have a lagging muscle group once again can be absolutely brilliant to bring that up okay and so mad for a mad pump as well also great for recovery so concentric methods like sleds um banded exercises anything like that that's high volume low load um absolutely brilliant for recovery um you know stuff like booty bands sleds all of that stuff lots and lots of reps um low load just lots of volume absolutely brilliant in terms of recovering joints tendons muscles that are sore um helps to flush out you know waste products brings in good nutrients um oxygen blood to that to that joint or any of the areas that you're working in terms of that as well so team that is essentially how it looks now let's look at how your program considerations so when you're programming something like this it, it really there's three things you need to understand is like what is the goal what is the exercise you're using and, and what is the person's ability to recover okay so each method as you've sort of seen through here is different impacts and different uh stimulus on the body and ultimately the goal is is to adapt and get the most out of it so when you when you're considering what to put in your program number one you've got to know the goal okay so choose the right method for the goal what are you trying to improve is strength and power is it hypertrophy and resilience or is it conditioning or is it a combination of the all going back through this this webinar and, and looking at you know the different methods and where they look up you select the right method for the actual goal that you're working on so strength and power go hand in hand they go very close together same with hypertrophy if you're working on strength and power good base is starting with the hypertrophy and resilience 
And I'll probably go a step further in saying that conditioning is, is probably just as important for strength and power along the lines as well. And you just get skinnier and skinnier at the top as you, as you become more specialized. But understanding what method to choose for your goal is, is extremely important. Then the exercise. So you've got to match the tool to the method, okay? And so push and pull exercises. Generally, a push exercise is going to respond better to an eccentric loading and a pull exercise is going to um, respond better to an isometric. So something like uh, a bench pull, you know, holding at the top, generally you're going to get a better response to an isometric hold. Something like a squat, you're going to get a better response to an eccentric um, method, okay? Um, then it's, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to get more performance or more or a better teaching stimulus, okay? And so stuff like eccentric, isometrics, like absolutely brilliant, for a teaching tool okay so selecting an exercise so say for example you're trying to teach someone the back squat or trying to improve someone's back squat selecting something and let's say they they tip forward in their back squat so they actually need better quad development so using a teaching tool like either a safety bar a front squat a frankenstein squat with a slow eccentric can be absolutely brilliant if that's you know that's a teaching tool if you're looking at performance, you'll probably select the exercise that is closest to the thing you want to perform at. Do that, select the method, select the exercise, and you'll go really, really well. And exercise order is very, very important as well because the different methods will have different amounts of fatigue from the method. So say, for example, if you're doing explosive methods, generally you want to do those exercises near the start of a workout because you're going to be fresher, you're going to have the ability to produce more force, more speed, more power. So having those methods, those concentric, fast exercises at the start might be plyometrics, stuff like that. Generally, what we'll program is, is some plyometrics or some fast exercises at the start of the workout. Because I know it's going to switch on the nervous system and then allow for more when I go into our strength or hypertrophy methods. It's going to wake up the nervous system, recruit more muscle fibers, and essentially allow me to, you know, develop force faster and get more from my session. So then you've also got things like eccentrics, you know, they're going to fatigue you a lot. You know, and, and if you're doing your heavy lifting, generally you want to have that at the start or, or near the middle at the very least um, of, of your session. And then, you know, you've got your pump only methods or, you know, maybe the stuff that, you know, isn't as technical, um, you know, towards the end. So selecting the exercise order is very, very important. Final piece is you have your recovery. So ultimately you can only, you know, program what you can adapt to. And so looking into things like stress, if you're using more of the heavy eccentric, the isometrics that you know ramp up their nervous system a lot, but you've got a lot of stress on, you know, maybe on those days where it's like maybe you didn't sleep, maybe your kids are sick, maybe you had a shit day at work. You know, maybe instead of, you know, the eccentric or isometric focus work, you might do some concentric only work. Still getting a great stimulus, but you know it's it's not as impactful on the nervous system. Um, lifestyle, can the person recover? You know, are you sleeping? Are you getting enough food? Do you have the resources, the building blocks? Um, are you getting enough protein to actually recover from something like eccentric focus training? Do you have enough carbohydrates to make the most of, you know, some of these more high powered methods um, to adapt to it? Also like training age and, and demographics. So, you know, if you're newer, Eccentric training is absolutely brilliant for a teaching tool in terms of um, adaptations to um, motor learning. But you know, using a fast eccentric might be the absolute worst thing. And this is this is why I believe this is the missing stuff. You go to something like CrossFit, someone does a clean, and they've never done a deadlift before. And they've never done you know an RDL, and they can't control that with great like um technique how are they going to do something like a clean so making sure that you select the right exercise the right method for the training age is is really really important then you've got demographics as well so something with a high muscle damage um you know for someone who's older or a low recovery 
ability may not be the best thing okay so things to consider in terms of your programming so team that is the presentation um i hope you got a lot out of it i just want to say thank you if you did listen to this also if you do want a free two-week trial just send the code word either conditioning hypertrophy or strength and power to me at dylan limitless on instagram and i will hook you up a two-week trial of a program based on exactly your goals and, and what we talked about in this Hope you got a lot out of it. See you soon. Bye.